Wisteria. Hello, guys. Good morning. So, time for a bit of a sunbathing. So, Lara, you were wondering where the dwarf mongoose had gone to. Well, there we go. They were around, and I've actually seen quite a few bounding around, but none of them sitting out in the sun. And it's probably the reason why we haven't seen too many of them is because we haven't had too much sunshine the last few days. It's been cold, it's been windy, and so these guys are clever. No need to be out in horrible weather like that. Rather go and tuck yourself in in a termite mound and stay nice and warm inside there and use each other for body heat. And so that's why they've been inside. But today they're going to be ferocious feeders. They will probably be quite hungry from being cold. And the other side of it is that they know the soil, the top layer, might be a bit damp. And therefore it's going to be easy to dig in. We can actually see them now busy digging. So they're going along using their nose and then they try and dig out little insects and grubs and varying other food sources that they can find given that they are carnivores. Imagine how sensitive their nose must be to be able to smell an insect from sort of below ground. Really cool. I love watching these guys. They're so much fun. Yes, Gillian, their movements are jerky. It's it's kind of like Byron after his cup of coffee. He sort of becomes quite jerky in his movements as well. It's how these guys do things. No, it's just that they're busy little animals. They they like to root around and they kind of almost look as though they're hyperactive all the time. And so you'll find that they're always sort of moving their heads, moving their legs, bouncing around. And that's to be able to try and find food as well as to look out for danger. And if they didn't have those jerky movements, you'd find they'd probably get caught out. They have to keep searching around them all the time because of how many things eat them. They need to be aware of their environment. And so that jerky motion means that they can look around them very quickly and make sure that they're nice and safe. They're such cool things. I love dwarf mongoose. They've got so much personality and character. And it's always a joy to spend time with them. Now I can hear another type of animal approaching. It has bipedal in nature and is currently using a mechanical bull to drive around. It's amazing how sound carries in the bush. That car is far away and you can hear every word that the people are saying. There's our forktail drongo. Now these guys, this is interesting actually because we've got our forktail drongo with the dwarf mongoose and this is a common relationship that we'll see out here find that these dr drongos <coughs> will also follow meerkats so Byron will be able to tell us more about that from his time in Swalu where the drongos will mimic the meerkats alarm call and so what happens is, is even with these mongoose when they get an insect or a food item the drongo then alarm calls just like the mongoose would it imitates them and mimics them and that mongoose then drops its food and runs quickly to its burrow to try and hide away from whatever potential threat there was and it drops its food and that then allows the drongo to come down and grab it and so you'll often find where there's a dwarf mongoose a drongo close by but mongoose are not stupid and neither are meerkats and so when the drongo does it once the, the this mongoose and meerkats listen when it does it twice they still kind of take notice but the third or fourth time these guys realize hang on a second there's something going on here and they will then not move and the drongo comes down and they actually chase the drongo back and that's when the drongo will fly away and leave them alone but a very cool interspecies relationship that takes place between the drongos and the dwarf mongoose themselves now our mongoose have all departed the scene. Yes, good morning to you too, Franklin. Sure. Making lots of noise on our right hand side here. But we're going to try and carry on and see what else we can find now that our mongoose have all disappeared. 